Halleluja. 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 Let's greet with each other. Let's welcome to our return to the word Beria special lecture. Today's scripture is John chapter 14, verse 8 to four, uh, 14. Let's read it all together. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing His work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, Whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Amen. Let us pray all together and also for our overseer to have the wisdom, knowledge, and power of the Word and also for ourselves to be filled with the Word. Let us pray all together. God the Father, thank you for 
granting us this opportunity to hold this special lecture. Please open everyone's heart and ears so that they can hear the word of the Holy Spirit. Please help their whole uh, heart not to be confused by the worldly gods, but only fill their heart with the, uh, the word of the Holy Spirit. Please help them not to listen to this word from my word, but by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we prayed. There are people who are hindering people from hearing the word of Simon. I think it's rather thankful. You must not listen to my word. My face and my reputation is already dead. It's already buried. Please do not listen to my own. Only my soul is living. So please receive the word of God through my soul. Please listen only to the word of God. They have good job. They have good job to clarify not to listen to men's word. You have to listen to the word of God. You have heard the Word of God until now because the Word of God did not take root in yourself. It is very dangerous and I feel very sorry about it. Many of you have already listened to the original uh, lecture of Berry Academy, but, how, but you, many of you haven't still uh, acknowledged the Word of God yet. When spring comes, in the countryside. Farmers collect good rice seeds and they soak, they rinse it in the water and then they uh, they put it in the water and all the chefs surfacing on the water, they t take it away, they throw it away and they only use the good seeds that it sinked in the water and they sink it in the water for a while so that it can swell and sink deeply. And then they make the soil, the rice paddy, they uh, level the soil. They level the soil on the rice paddy and then soak the, soak the soil. And then they scatter the seeds and then they put water just a, a little bit just a little bit above the soil and in two days the seeds grow roots and then the roots will be sown in the soil and then the farmers will add more water and more water and when the root is root becomes strong they become the seedlings and the process of making seedlings is very important it's not easy to make farmers are very careful in growing the seedlings the word of God also we have to listen carefully so that the word becomes sink in the water and become uh, weighty seed seedlings so that it doesn't go it doesn't go astray the farmers does not fill water from the beginning they just fill, fill just a little bit of water until the root grows when the root grows strongly they the farmers will add more water the word in the Bible it says seed 
the children of God, they don't commit sin because the seed of the word is in them. Because there is a uh, seed of the word, they do not sin. What is the reason the saints live a holy life? Why are they holy? The word I speak to you are holy. You are cleansed because of the word I spoke to you in John 15. Three, you have to have the word of God in you in order to overcome, overcome the sin. What it means, we will listen today. As you listen to the word, do not listen to it as man's word. Pay attention. Listen to it as a weighty words, just like the seeds sink in the water, so that the word can take root in your heart. I've read the Bible cover to cover many times. I read a lot, but that was it. I lived like a Pharisee. I lived the, with fleshly ordinances. But the moment I acknowledged the truth, the moment I realized the, the picture of God's will, I started living, living spiritually. I became the witness of Jesus. I became the disciple of Jesus. Likewise, the word of God, when the word of God comes into us by the Holy Spirit, it needs to take root. And for, 46, uh, for 60 years, I am preaching the same gospel without changing. I engraved Songjuk uh, Am, which means pine bamboo rock. I engraved it on this big rock. Uh, when I enter and le leave my residence, I always see this big rock. The past and now, am I different? I always check myself by looking at that engraved rock. I am the same. I never changed. People say I have changed. I was good in the past, but now I'm not good anymore. They, that's what they are saying, but I, haven't, I have not changed. Isn't that strange? If there is word of God, once it take root, it will grow and make roots. My wish is for you to have the faith like I did and make fruits. Uh, what is happening, what is taking place right now, uh, by looking at it, we can see, we can distinguish who has faith, who doesn't have a faith. What is the difference between those who have faith and who doesn't have a faith? My dear saints, please receive the word of God in your, soul, in your heart. Listen carefully. Through this special lecture, uh, in the original Berea Academy, you have learned, uh, learned like a panorama, but we do not talk about panorama here. For instance, if you take a train from Seoul to Busan, there are many stations in between Seoul and Busan. But if you fall asleep until you reach the destination, when you wake up, a few hours later you arrive to destination, but you don't get to see the stations in between. Even though you are not, uh, even though you are awake, you don't really uh, care about the stations in between. But if you pay attention to each stations in between. For instance, this is Kimcheon Station. There is a Yongmu. Uh, 
there is a Daejeon station. If you know the history of each station, it will be more fun. But if you just travel from Seoul to Busan, it's less fun. Some people travel far away, taking flight, 14 hours of flight, and they think it's 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 a gr great thing, but it's not great at all. For 14, 12 hours, you don't get to move. You're just stuck in this tiny seat. You have to sleep as you sit. It's like a punishment. There is nothing to see, no sightseeing on your on the flight. But if you travel by train for four, for 14 hours, there will be a lot of sightseeing. If you travel by car, it will be more fun. But now, but people just like taking a flight. They just um, they just arrive the destination without really appreciating stations in between. So this very uh, special lecture is like we're looking at the stations in between. We're trying to understand each station so that um, we make our faith more more stronger. Those of you who already taken the original Barrier Academy, you ordain deacons, elders. You have many chances to learn. But although you studied a lot in in original Barrier Academy, if you had studied carefully, if you had learned carefully, and if you know, if you have learned it completely, you wouldn't have any confusions. But for this uh, special lecture, please pay attention so that you can keep your own soul strongly rooted on the Word. You must be, we, we must not become like a chef. The Bible says everything changes, everything changes, everything reforms. So all the presidents, they reform. We have a uh, President Moon now and, every, and a lot of things will be reformed. The next president will reform again because the hu humans, their preferences, their taste changes. So according to their preferences, people change. The old people say that the young people are so different than, than them. The people in the past and the people nowadays very think very, very differently. The old people, when they were young, they probably were the same. But depending on the cultures at the time, um, people in my age are more conservative. But the people nowadays are more open-minded. They are more influenced by Western culture. At the time, at my time, we were more influenced by Western, uh, Eastern culture. So there are uh, great differences. So it is na it is natural that things change, but the Word of God never changes. This this. When you hear this, when you hear that God never changes, you have to acknowledge that you have to learn the Word of God. The world changes. The world changes, endlessly changes. Now, people say about reform, reformation, it has a good meaning. It's good, and especially young people, they like it. But the, the humanism changes all the time. They say the world changes. How come the church does not change? 
Even though the world changes, the church not supposed to change. The word of God never changes. Never changes. That's why with the word that never changes, God, God said, this is my, this is the truth. The law, we don't, we don't call it the truth because it changes. The priests change the law, the rituals, the sacrifice, the temple, they change, they change. That's why we don't call the law truth. The truth never changes. We have to know this. We have to, although we know very well about this truth, if we don't teach our children, they will fall away. So we need to, um, we need to teach them. We need to teach them the truth. We all need to become a teacher of this truth. We have learned a lot past two lectures, and as we read this passage today, Philip, the, uh, one of the disciples of Jesus, he said, show us the Father, then it will be enough for us. I think it's the same then and now. Everyone, the pe people wants to see God. You want to see the, you want to see God the Father. Sometimes we doubt whether He exists or not. You, you feel like if you hear the word, if you hear the, His voice, then He will have a good faith. When you go to the mountain, there are people who is crying out, Father, God the Father, God the Father. They only, but they only hear the echo of, of their, their voice. They don't get to hear the voice of, the, uh, voice of God. They want to see God so much, they close their eyes tightly, really tightly. If you ask them why they close their eyes so hard, they will say, I, I'm trying to see God. If, you wanna, if they want to see God, why wouldn't they just open their eyes and see? Jesus, open, Jesus always looked toward, looked toward the heaven and opened his, opened his eyes and looked toward the heaven. In, in America, I saw pastors looking, looking up and pray. Korean people always close their eyes and always crouch and then pray. They squeeze their eyes squeeze their eyes so hard they sometimes see some kind of light and they deceive themselves as if they have seen something but uh, this mysticism is mysticism are based on your feeling we must be careful. We must watch out about uh, this mysticism. All other religions are mysticism. Christianity is not mysticism. We do not rely on our feeling. We do not rely on, we do not rely on the changes of feeling. Experiencing is nothing like a feeling. We experience something based on the Bible, not based on our feelings. If some people think that when they are happy, they are filled with the grace and the Holy Spirit. When they are sad, they are not. Let's not conf get confused. We need to have the faith rooted in our heart. Uh, 
We need to have the word take root in our hearts. On mountains, high mountains, on Arbor Day in Korea, people go up on the mountain and so uh, plant trees, but nine, only 90% 90 uh, 90 of them die, only less than 10% might survive. Just a few days later, the tree dies because they uh, uprooted the tree and then planted on a strange soil. The plants hardly survived. But when I visited America, it was a very, very high mountain, about 4,000 kilometer high. It was a very, very high mountain. They don't, they don't plant uh, trees there, but then still they have a lot of trees. And then I saw pine cones all over the place, pine cones. So many pine cones all over the mountain. So I asked the ranger, what what is what is what's up with this and he said once they uh, plant trees there the trees trees dies they have to uh, water them they have to take care of them but who can do that on up on the mountain but once the seed is sown on the ground and the seed, when the seed grows, the the root, then it survives. So I could see all the small trees growing from the ground. When a tree was uh, uprooted and and planted on a strange soil, they die. There are a tree called tea tree. Tea tree, if you uproot it, we grow a lot of tea trees uh, in Korea. If you uproot a tea tree, a small tea tree and, and plant it in somewhere else, then the tea tree cannot take root. The tea tree only uh, leaves when you sown the seed. So uh, my old Korean people say that uh, ladies are like the tea tree. So once the once uh, this virgin married to one family, she needs to live there forever. So don't try to uproot a tree and then plant it somewhere else, but plant a seed in you. The reason uh, we can protect ourselves from demons or all the evil spirits attacked is because we have the Word of God. You have to listen carefully about this word. Philip, ha Philip wanted to see God the Father. He wanted to see the Father. It's like Philip is talking for ourselves. All of you might want to see God. Maybe this is our hope, everyone's hope to see God. It'll be enough for us. Jesus said, Philip, I have been with you for so long. Still you don't know me. Those who have seen me have seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? This is the answer. And, but people ignore what Jesus said, still asking to see God. 
God the Father, show us the Father, show us the Father. Then you will never be able to see the Father. If you cannot see God the Father in this world, you cannot see Him in His world. If you cannot see the Father in this world, you cannot take part in the first resurrection. You cannot enter His kingdom. His kingdom. You can never see God the Father. Only those who see God the Father in this world can take part in the first resurrection and also enter heaven and be able to see God the Father. Live with God the Father for eternal life. It's not our conviction that we can we go to heaven. It doesn't happen according to our feeling, but only according to the word of God. So John seventeen twelve, John seventeen twelve. Jesus prayed to God with the name you have given me. Give this uh, make make them one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you have given me. None has, none has been lost except the one who doomed to destruction so that the scripture will be fulfilled. There is procedure. But people try to uh, see God apart from this procedure. When Jesus taught the people in Matthew chapter 5, he sat down on the mountain and people came and he opened his mouth and, and teach. Wouldn't you open your mouth when you teach? But if you see uh, in New King, New King James Version, it says he opened his mouth and taught. He's from Nazarene, Nazareth, his, his uh, Nazarene. So he was wearing clo clothes of Nazarene. It, he was a rusty countryman. In Korea, if you, although the people who live in the countryside, although they wear a nice suit and come to Seoul, they think they will look like a Korean, but they, they can tell he is a countryman. Somehow, it's noticeable. That is strange. <coughs> Likewise, since Jesus was Nazarene, his appearance would give away as a countryman. And they said, what good can come from Nazareth? When they see him as just, as just a Nazareth, there was nothing to see. Who is this Philip? He is one of the disciples of Jesus. Galileans are all uh, the people uh, very close to the town of Nazareth. So it's about the same region. When they hear the word of uh, Jesus, they didn't consider him like a prophet or the teachers, but because his word has something, they pay attention to his word. 
When he opened his mouth and teach, another word, don't try to listen to my word by looking at my appearances, but only focus on the, the word. I speak what the Father taught me. So they are not they are not supposed to see the appearance of Nazarene, but they are paying attention to the word that comes from his mouth. When we listen to the word of God, we're not listening to the word of God by looking at the man. But we are listening, we are paying attention to the word coming through the lips, knowing that it's from the Holy Spirit. Like I said before, I, I am as good as dead, but my, these words are coming from our soul. The Holy Spirit who is in me, is preaching this word of God. Jesus said, who's my mother, who's my brother or sister? Whoever does God's will are my brothers and sister and mother. If you don't, if, if you don't do according to God's will, although they are brother or sister, they have nothing to do with Jesus. So we have to be careful and listen to the word. Lord, show us the Father. 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 With earnest heart, let's say, Lord, show us the Father. We are leaders. We are leaders among 1,000. I can't preach to all the world. That's why I need to make disciples. The 11 disciples, can they reach to, to all the world? They need to make disciples, make disciples and disciples, and make more disciples. That's how we, even we, could hear the Word of God. This special lecture is last chance for me. I don't have the time. I don't have the health. This special lecture is the last chance for me to teach you. So you need to listen carefully so that you can make disciples with this word. In the school oval, teachers would make uh, one line, big line, about 50 students, and then the teacher would uh, whisper something to the first student, and then the first student will giggle, giggle, and then not, he could not hear much. And then he passed on to the next students, and at the end, the student will speak to completely different thing than what the teacher first said. The first student who hear the teacher's message, he needs to pay attention. But it was so funny, he, he just giggled, he couldn't hear completely, and then just pass it on to the next students. And the next student would speak and pass it on and on, and at the end, the message becomes completely different. So the passing on is like that. It's very hard. You have to listen carefully. You have to listen carefully. This is the word of God. You have to ca listen carefully. Philip said, show us the Father. So this is our hope too. Isn't this the hope? Is this our hope? It is also my hope before. What, when I first believed in Jesus, I had received, I speak in tongue, but I really s sought to, to see God the Father. I imagined uh, different forms of God. But for five years, I haven't seen God. But the moment I 
uh, I realized the truth, I saw God. Philip, to Philip, Jesus said, I have been with you for so long, you still don't know me. Those who see me, see the Father. So, once you know Jesus, you, see, you saw the Father. You have to know Jesus first in order to see the Father. You have to know Jesus. You need to know Jesus. There was a whole year I preached about Jesus and I wrote a book. The uh, title was Let Us Know Jesus. We have to know Jesus. But people, uh, they study the Bible, and as they study the Bible, they trespass, they tra transcend Jesus. They learn about Jesus, and they still want to learn more. They learn more, more than Jesus, so they try to learn something else. Jesus is the destination. We need to know Jesus. However, we need to know Jesus. The, the person who started later can arrive to this destination first. Those people who learn about Jesus, they want to learn more. They want to learn about Moses. They want to learn about Paul. There, uh, in Fourth Berea Academy, there was a, one student who was very enthusiastic. And he was very passionate. He was very passionate in learning. He said, I'm going to go study abroad in America, and I will study more, and I will work for a Bay Area movement. Uh, he, he said he will make Bay Area movement as, as a theology, and I was very concerned about him. He went to the United States, and he studied at, co at college, and he learned about Paul. And he said, Beria is not everything. And he fell away. Jesus is our destination. Once you know Jesus, they would say, oh, I now I understand about Jesus. Now I need to learn something else. People, people are, many people are like that. The heresies, they, they translate Bible. They translate Bible, and that their translation is wrong. That's why they become heresy. Once we know Jesus, that is it. That is the destination. What is the, the Bible is about? It's about Jesus. It's teaching us about Jesus. You have a, you have a, let's say you are delivering a letter. The letter, uh, the envelope has the address. Once you found the address, do you leave the letter there or just take it with you and come back with the letter? You're supposed to leave the letter in that address. Once you came to Jesus, once you know Jesus, that's it. If somebody drag you to somewhere else, they say there's there's a greater people. There are there is Moses, there is Abraham. When Jesus went up on the mountain of configuration, there was Elijah. There's Moses. Moses represents the law. law the uh, Elijah represented prof prophecy. And then Moses and Elijah disappeared, and only Jesus lived. Jesus stood on the mountain. And there was a voice of God says, He is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. God did not say to listen to Moses, listen to Elijah, but listen to Jesus. When Jesus came, no more Moses, no more law, no more prophet. 
only Jesus. Prophets were prophesied, prophets prophesied to Jesus. The law was leading to Jesus as well. With the fleshly ordinances, they, the, the law led to Jesus. The prophecy led to Jesus. When Jesus came, nothing matters, nothing else matters anymore. If you still have the Moses, if you still have Paul's and uh, prophets, then wash it away. Only Jesus needs to be left in your heart. Only Jesus. And only the Word of God. Who is Jesus? He is my Son with whom, uh, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. That's, that's, our, that's the God speaking to us. God testify to Jesus. That's why we know that Jesus is the Son of God. We're not claiming to claiming that Jesus is the Son of God on our own. We have this clear evidence. Jesus said, how how You still don't know me. If you don't know me, you don't know the Father. If you know me, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. How do we see the Father? What is gospel? Gospel, people think that a good words, well-wishing words are gospels. Gospels, gospel is not an all-inclusive, all-embracing, all-embracing word. The good stories, good words. These are not word. These are not gospels. What I'm, pre what I'm saying right now is also a parable, it's not gospel. There is only one gospel. Let's read, let's read the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 4, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Let's read it together one more time. Louder voice. This is the fact that must not change. You have to believe this. You can't believe what, why? Because the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Let's read it together. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. John the disciple said, he, he said he saw the word came in flesh. He saw the glory of the word. Those who doesn't believe because the God of this world, this age has blinded them, blinded the minds of unbelievers. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the image of God. Jesus is the image of God. In Hebrew chapter 1, 3, Jesus is the exact representation of His being. Jesus is the last and the highest and the best way to show himself to us. God has shown himself to us through his work.
He showed us what God does. If you look over this, then you become like a drifting boat. Drifting boat. You have to know this for sure. The unbelievers, what is the consequences of the unbelievers? We know what causes the unbelieving spirit. The God of the the verse 3, it says, and it, even if our gospel is failed, it is failed to those who are perishing. Jesus is not this ignorant man. He's not um, a human but he is the exact representation of God's being. He is the image of God. If you don't believe this, that that's because the God of this world, this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. And those who does not believe, they are already destined to be per to perished. Those who are already uh, destined to per predestined to perish, they cannot believe. I do not believe in predestination, but some of these verses actually speak, uh, actually proves proves the pre predestination. Some parts of the predestination. When you listen to the Word of God, it's so hard to believe. But when I hear the Word of God, I just believed it. I could believe it. When I hear that Jesus is God, I could believe it. And, and all these, uh, the message I'm preaching right now, some people also uh, make misunderstand, misunderstand my teachings, and I, that's, why, that's how I became a heresy. Modalism, do you know what modalism is? Some accuse me, at, me as a modalist. modalist. You've heard about it, right? You have. You heard about uh, modalism. You ask them. You ask them what modalism is. Then they will not be able to answer you. Ask them. Ask. Ask them back. Some pastor would accuse me as a modalist. Then ask. Ask them what modalist is. Modalism is. The, about nine out of ten won't be able to answer you back. Won't be able to answer it. Modalism is uh, this. God can become the son son can become the father and sometimes becomes to the whole becomes the holy spirit so it's just one god but he appear as son as the father as the holy spirit this is modalism and they accuse me that I said, I said that. But I said, what I said was, the Father God, the, the Word, who was in the bosom of the Father, Father God showed him through the Word, and through the Son, He showed the He showed God. And when the Son ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit came into us and show 
and proved uh, uh, and, and showed us that God is in us. And I'm not so sure, but they say I said this. There is a Mr. Kim. People call him father. If he go to school, he has a job as a teacher. If he go to church, he has a job as an elder. So some people call him elder, some people call him teacher, some people call him father. But God is, but, but this is only one person. So the ex, uh, depending on how things were expressed, uh, the meaning is could be different. And I heard, I heard someone explaining about uh, Mongolian spot on Korean babies. It's it happened because uh, there are people who uh, teach about the Trinity in such a horrible way, but they don't tell them a heresy. The Father God no one can see. But God showed Himself through the Word. The Word is God. We could only hear God with our eyes, but He became flesh and came to this earth. And He is God. As the Son of God, He came to this world. No one can see God. God, the, no one can see the Father. God does not refer to only the Father. The Holy Spirit came into us with the name Jesus and lead us and govern us, governs us. The Holy Spirit is the God in us. I always distinguish between the God the Father and God. I always distinguish that no one ever seen God the Father. Only Jesus who came from his bosom knows the Father. God the Father is above the heaven. No one can see him. He is so great. He is in heaven above the heaven. Heaven uh, in the Bible is in plural. There is heaven and there is a heaven above the heaven. The universe is heaven. How Do you know how big the universe is? People now, the scientists say that it takes 25 billion years to go from the end of the universe to the end. It's the scientists back then, they said it, it was only 14 billion years, but now they say it takes 25 billion years. In one second, the light uh, runs seven and a half around the earth. It's so fast. The light is very fast. But it takes 25 billion years, light years, to reach from the end of the universe to the other side of the, uh, the universe. So the, the light, the, the light of this world has that kind of speed. That's the speed, speed of the light. 
uh, with that speed of light from the moment the universe created it if if the uh, the light sh started to run it only ran it only reached one third of the universe and it's it needs to it takes twice the time in order to reach to the end that's how that's how it vasts the universe so since the light only reached one third of the universe the other uh, the two two third of the universe is still darkness so from the heaven spiritual heaven the universe will be s seen as a restroom of a rich mansion the universe is also called the darkness. In the Bible, it says uh, darkness. We call it heaven. And there is a heaven above this universe, which is spiritual heaven, spiritual world. If this is uh, the universe, my if the, my fist is the size of the universe, the heaven is much, much bigger than my fist. So how big is it? But the God the Father is even greater than the spiritual world. The newborn baby, the fetus, the sperm is the least size of living being. Least size of the living being. We call it a uh, sperm. How could it see his his mother? It cannot see the mother. In like manner, God is greater than this universe and the heaven above the universe. He is the father. And for this dusty being of human, he came to this earth. That's, that's, the, uh, that's God the Father. And Jesus, whom the Father had sent, we have to know him. When I when I say God the Father, you just raise your head to heaven. Where is the God the Father? You just you just look in the look in the look look above look above. Where is the Father? When we say God, can we see Him? We can see we can see God. We cannot see God the Father, but we can see the exact representation of his being. The image of God. When this apartment was building before they were built, they show you the models. They say they will build a, a apartments just as the models so he is the image of God and we are built we are made in likeness of the image we are um, we are the miniature models of the real being he has all the org org organs, he has blood vessels, he has eyes, hearings, he has voice. He came in this world just like us. He was man. He's not human. In Chinese letter, uh, human letter, human looks like th like that. Two fingers together. Human are from men, uh, male and female. This is human, who came from male and female. 
Does God, uh, does a uh, man, a human comes from father or mother? He, humans come from male and female. Humans come from men, uh, hu uh, male and fema female. But Jesus is not human. Jesus came as a man. Jesus is not human. He is man. He is man. This man was there before human. He is man. He did not come from male and female. Humans are the likeness of the image. He came as man and who is, who is he? People say he is Nazarene, he is Jewish. People will say, people will describe him as Jewish or Nazarene. Uh, Moon Sun Myung, who died a few years ago, he pro he claimed that he is God. There are many people like that. There are many people who claim that they are God. They they have their own theory. Maybe they uh, learn from Jesus. Jesus says he is man, so they. They believe that they could, they could be God too. Moon Sun Myung has parents, so he was not man, he was human. The the founder of everlasting life, the the the, the heresy, if he has father and mother, then he is only human. Moon Sun Myung too. He is only human. Last year I preached about it. We have a conflict with the world, but still we need to win because because of Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the virgin was conceived and gave birth to a son. This is our faith. The people of the world laugh at us. Abraham, the angel came to Abraham and said, you will have a son. Sarah was over 90 years old and Sarah left. He, she, could no longer have a baby, but the angel told Abraham he's going to have a son. So uh, Sarah laughed. Even then, when a when virgin gave birth to a son, isn't this more ridiculous? It's more ridiculous. Isaac was named after Sarah being left at the news. People of the world, when they hear Jesus Emmanuel, they, they tease that it, they don't believe it. But we have to believe Jesus is Emmanuel, the virgin conceived and gave birth to a son. How how did she conceive only uh, by the Holy Spirit? By the Holy Spirit, she was conceived and gave birth to a son. This is our faith. We have to believe this. Emmanuel is not just a lyric of of song. This is one of the priority of our faith. We have to believe this, not by our right. We have to believe this, even though it's not reasonable, scientifically reasonable. We have to believe this by faith. 
People don't believe this. So among even among Christians, they say. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. They don't believe this, but they believe that Jesus is the son between Mary and Joseph, or he was legitimate. He was uh, he was conceived before Mary got married with someone else. And some other people also claim that Jesus got married with Magdala Maria and have children. There actually is a town, supposedly, uh, the descendants of Jesus live. Isn't this ridiculous? And some Christians would... Some Christians think that, oh, there is a descendants, descendants of a descendants of Jesus. How great is it? We must not believe that. We must. We must learn well so that we don't get confused by all that. We have to believe in the Emmanuel. The world does not accept that. We believe in Emmanuel, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin, Virgin gave birth to a son. Give birth to the Son of God. Emmanuel, this is called Emmanuel. We must believe this unto death. We must believe this. Otherwise, otherwise, we. It's very hard to to protect our faith. We do not believe according to a uh, uh, rational rationale, but we believe with faith we have to have we have to believe this Jesus gave us the only begotten son we need to believe we need to believe him not by reasonings or knowledge but by faith we need to come to know this you need to believe this we need to believe I urge you to believe. I urge you, urge you to believe. Jesus is the exact representation of God's being. The Word of God was with God. He is God. And this Word, who is God, became flesh and came to this world and lived in La Nazareth for 30 years. He suffered all the sufferings of human. He experienced the uh, anguishes and everything that man can experience. He also experienced it. He, in Isaiah, it says he knows the life of man. He experienced starvation. He experienced the pain. He experienced sicknesses because he came as man. He lived a man's life for 30 years. And he, in his time, he appeared in Jordan River and he was baptized. And God said, this is my son whom I love with him, with whom I am well pleased. From then on, he came to Jerusalem and he was treated as a sinner. He was flogged, he was spit on. Just He was treated just like the murderer, just like the robber. And he was 
convicted a sinner and he died on the cross and God raised him from the dead the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead and he was sent to heaven when he was a sin when he ascended to heaven there was a 500 saints watching him and now he's on the right hand side of God and he is in heaven in the spiritual world from there he asked for the Holy Spirit from the Father and he sent the Holy Spirit to us and from there he's going to come again to judge that is God he is God he came into our history he is his real being God came into the history of mankind and he is a real being God came into the man, human's man, history and he's the real being when Mary engaged to Joseph because because there was a Joseph um, Jesus was protected because if there was no Joseph um, if Mary gave birth to a son unmarried she would have been stoned to death but Joseph protected Jesus and he claimed that he's the father he believed that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit by believing it, Joseph protected him. Joseph protected Joseph. They lived in Nazareth because there was no prophecies about Nazareth. It was no prophet ever talked about Nazareth. So people were inattentive to, to, to Nazareth, the town of Nazareth. That's how Jesus lived there for 30 years without any he could, he could safely, safely live there. He is Emmanuel, Jesus. Jesus is Emmanuel. It's not a title of song. This is a very, very important thing that we need to believe. Three times, let's say, Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is Emmanuel. The virgin conceived by the Holy Spirit and gave birth to a son, and his name is Emmanuel. The virgin was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and the virgin gave birth to a son. And who is this? He is God. Let, let us all say together, Jesus is my, our God. Jesus is our God. He's not our Father. He is God. When you see Him, it's just like you see the Father because Jesus is the image of God. Image of God. Jesus is our God. Throughout my life, why I have the power, spiritual power, why my prayers get answered so well, the Father only received the glory. The Father is to be glorified only. And He loved us so much, He gave us His Son. The worship service is for the Father. The worship service on the Lord's Day is only aimed for the Father. The offering is for the Father. We, we do not give this offering to the church or to anyone, to any organizations. We give this offering to God. The tithe also is for God. We give the tithe to God, to, to, to God's storage. We fill God's storage. The, Lord, the Lord's Day offerings we give to the Father. Jesus said, I came to, be, I came to serve. The Father is to be served. Jesus, our God, 
He came to, to save us. Jesus came to help us. Jesus came to support us. So when, when you pray, Jesus said, God will be glorified and I will do what you ask for. So don't, don't say, God the Father, give me this, give me that. So ask to Jesus. God the Father is only to be served. So we need to, we, we need to uh, give the worship service to the Father. When we listen to the Word, when we give offerings, we have to do all this before the Father. Do not give offerings, do not uh, give worship service reluctantly, but freely give and freely um, give the ser worship service with all your heart. We need to serve, serve whole, wholeheartedly to, uh, the Father, God, the Father. My God, Jesus, please help me. Please listen to my prayer. My God, Jesus, please help me. Give me the power. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. So you seek, you ask from God Jesus, from Jesus. Jesus is my God. Don't forget this. All your life, you must not forget this. You, it's like you understand now, but when you leave the church, you forget about it and still ask Father for something. But God, but Father told us that He gave us the Son to help us. So ask Jesus, but you still say, no, I don't want to. I want to ask you, Father. Some people came to me and asked me to pray for him because he's sick. So I told them, just oh, why don't you go ask that pastor for prayer? And he would insist to receive the prayer from me. But from now on, don't ask anything from the Father. Only glorify the Father. Let's say, God the Father, we glorify, we glorify you. So now you give worship service to God and give the offerings and prayers and give thanks to God the Father with all your heart god does not see your see uh, see the appearance he sees the center of your heart and god gave everything to the son so you so we must ask jesus let's all say my god jesus help me until now, you probably haven't called Jesus God. Although you have taught so many times, you haven't really, you, I'm, you probably haven't called Him God. His disciples emphasized on Jesus being the God, that Jesus is God. They would say, how could God born from man? How could God live in this world? How could God live like us? People don't believe it, but we need to believe that. We need to believe that Jesus is God. Let's all say that Jesus is my God. Jesus is my God. When you are confident of this, your prayer will be received. Your, you, will, you will receive the answer of your prayer. If you still insist that you don't want to, you don't want to pray in, in the, in, you, you don't want to ask Jesus, but ask God, the Father, that you won't be able to answer any of your prayer. Jesus said, when, the God, when God the Father is glorified, I will do it. Let's all say, my God, Jesus, my God, Jesus, my God, Jesus, Jesus is my God. 
Our God is Jesus. Our God is Jesus. Our God is Jesus. Jesus is my God. Jesus is my God. He, the Word became flesh, and He is our God. Jesus, who was raised in Nazareth, He is our God. Jesus is our God. Let's say ten times, Jesus is our God. 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 Jesus is our louder. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our God. Louder, louder. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our God. Jesus is our God. You must not be shaken of this fact. You have to be sure about this fact. Is man of, man, son of man is, is man. Son of God is God. God the Father is in heaven. No one can see Him. But we have seen the Son of God. He is the exact representation of His being. We must not pray for some, something else. When I pray, I pray, God the Father, your name be glorified. I pray to the Father like that. And then I ask, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I need this, I need that. Please help me on this. Please help me on that. I rely on Jesus. Those who doesn't have, have the God, they are those who perish. Our God is Jesus. Our God is Jesus. There is only one. Our God, Jesus. Our God, Jesus. You seek help from Him. Always pray, Jesus, our, Jesus, Jesus is my God. Even though He is man, even though He came, He became flesh and came on this earth. You call Him God, Jesus. Let's Let's clench our fists like this and say, Jesus is my God. Jesus is my God. Don't say He's man. Don't say He's Jewish. Don't say He's Nazarene. He is God. The unbelievers despised Him. But we say, Jesus is my Jesus. Is my. Let's say a hundred times, Jesus is my God. Jesus is my God. 